<laughs> as I was saying without the voice, <laughs> today we are going to talk about the Clifford algebras, also called geometric algebras. They were invented by Clifford. And what we do is we take a vector space, an underlying vector space, and we define a, a product there between these elements of the, of the vector space. And that product is called Clifford or geometric product. Um, and what you do is you take two elements of the vector space, vector space of dimension n, and the Clifford product defined like this without any dot in the middle is the sum of two different operations that we encounter already in vector spaces and in algebras. Here's the sum of a scalar or inner product or bilinear form, however you want to call it. So it's a product between two vectors that gives you a scalar as a result, plus the outer product of, of um, Grassmann algebra, the wedge product. Okay, so when we operate these two vectors with the Clifford product, we get a scalar plus a multivector. Okay, so as a new entity, it's hard to find uh, a geometric meaning for, me, for it, you know, right away. If you think, okay, yeah, I operate two vectors and I get the sum of us. How do you add a scalar and a vector, right? This can be done within this algebra. What is going to happen, it, it's also a graded algebra, and by that, I mean that it has elements of rank 1 or grade 1, elements of rank 2, rank 3, so we have these multivectors, the rank 0 will be the scalar, so you can actually do linear combinations of elements of this algebra, you know, of different ranks. Gives a, let me just put that, gives a graded algebra. Algebra. It gives a graded algebra. All right. <coughs> so I think the best thing that we can do. Extend. Extend. Thank you. <laughs> the best thing that we can do uh, before defining anything else, it's just do an example because this is a little bit uh, maybe different from what we have seen. So we'll do an example. Let me just tell you how we will denote notation for this algebra. We can, we can say as notation the Clifford algebra and we put here the vector space and we put the scalar product. Because the outer product, the wedge product, will always be the same. It's just the Grassmann uh, exterior product. But you can use different inner products by linear forms. Okay, and if you do that, you're just changing the vector, the underlying vector space, so the dimension of the underlying vector space, basically, as we said, you know, all vector spaces of uh, same dimension are isomorphic. So just changing the vector space and changing the inner product, you get a different Clifford algebra. So this is a way of expressing what algebra you are working with. Another way of expressing it is you put CL and then you put here P, comma, Q, comma, R. And these are the number of basis vectors that uh, square to 1, the number of basis vectors that square to minus 1, the number of basis vectors that square to 0. Let me say P number of basis vectors squaring to plus 1, Q, same number of basis vectors squaring to minus 1 and we will see an R number of basis vectors squaring to 0. And what do we mean by that is, let's, let, let me just explain this quickly. If this is your vector space, V, vector space, space of dimension n, okay, you can define a basis, and usually we define a basis which is orthogonal, so all the vectors of the basis are orthogonal, right? And you know that when you have a metric mm, or an inner product, so let's consider this E1, EN is your basis. 
and we are going to say that is orthogonal, which means for this inner product, this bilinear form, orthogonal. This means using your metric form, your EI dot EI. No, sorry. EI dot EJ. Go away. E i dot e j is equal to zero. Okay, that's how we define that the basis vectors are orthogonal, right? <laughs> now let's operate two of these vectors. Well, by squaring we mean when you multiply a vector times itself using the Clifford product. So let's see what we get when we do E1, E1. That will be equal to E1, E1 plus E1 wedge E1. And we know what this is, right? Remember what we said, said the wedge product gives you an idea of what, the st what you can span, the union. If you have two things that are linearly dependent, is going to give you zero. So the, the wedge product of a vector times itself is always zero. Right? So what we get here, the Clifford product of E1, E1, which is E1 square, this is the square, is just the, the scalar product of a vector times itself. If we take units, unit vectors, okay, then that will be well, let, let's don't take unit vectors. Let me just say we can do it in general, okay? So this will be just E1 dot wedge E1. Oh, great. So this is, sorry, E1 scalar product times E1, right? And we could put any number here, but if the vector is unit, that, that will be 1. However, this is not given you know, what we are when we say that this is equal to one if the vector is, is unit, we are thinking of a special uh, product, okay? If AI EI unit, okay? Using the usual dot product, we get E1, E1 equal one, right? But in general, a uh, scalar product is defined by a bilinear form. In general, defined by a bilinear form. And this bilinear form, which is just multiplying a vector times, is defined by a matrix. I don't know if you can remember that, but basically what you have is you know, your EI, EJ is just EI times a matrix, let's call it B, EJ. Okay, EI transpose B, EJ. This is how you define a, a scalar product in general, and in this B, you can have whatever you want in the diagonal. You could have 10 or 15 or 20, but that you know doesn't give you any additional information. But basically, you, ha you can have a number of ones, minus ones, or zeros. So these elements over here, the diagonal d1, dn, so d hdi. Each di can be one minus minus one plus one or zero. In fact, you know uh, you can you can prove that, but uh, for our case, we will just believe that. <laughs> so, depending on what numbers you get here, when you multiply e one times E1, when you do the scalar product, you will get plus 1 or minus 1 or you will get 0. Okay, so it depends on what, this defines your scalar product, this matrix. Okay. 
bilinear form. I forgot that name. Yeah. Okay. So when you when you give this notation, let me go a little bit up. When you are giving this notation, what you are giving is the first the num the dimension of the vector space, which will be p plus q plus r, and second you will give your scalar product because it's given by this. Okay. Let me just write this and then you can write here p plus q plus r equal n, the dimensions of, of the vector space. Okay. So two ways of defining your algebra. Um, let us do just one example. Okay. So the first one is just do planar geometry. And you know they are called geometric algebras for a reason. Uh, this Clifford algebra uh, is the smallest algebra that will capture the geometry of a given space. Okay. So planar geometry and planar motion will all be integrated within this algebra. You can define a motion and you can define a geometric entity as elements of this algebra and that makes a difference you know you, can, you don't have to go outside so far when we were doing you know displacements we were operating an element of the group times an element of the space they lived in different places a matrix times a vector right with this we will just multiply elements of the algebra okay. so planar geometry the underlying vector space vector space will have dimension 2, right? will be the plane R2 so we can think of a basis E1, E2, if we want we can think of this as our unit orthogonal X and Y uh, unit vectors And now we can define many scalar products. Let's just define as the scalar product our typical dot product E1 dot E2. And that is given by this matrix 1, 1. So when you multiply E1 times E1, you get 1. E2 times E2, you get 1. E1 times E2, you get 0. E2 times E1, you get So this we could call it the Clifford of two, vec two, two basis vectors squared to one. So two, zero, zero. Or the Clifford of R2 with our usual dot product. All right. So now let's start operating vectors, right? So we operate e1, e1, which is e1 square. That will be e1 dot e1 plus e1 which e1. This is zero. This is one. So e1 square is equal to one. E2 square. E2, E2, and we are using the Clifford product here. E2 dot E2 plus E2 wedge E2, that's equal to 1. And now we do E1, E2. And that is the dot product E1 dot E2 plus the wedge product E1 wedge E2. They are orthogonal, so this first part over here is equal to zero. And we did in Grassmann algebra. This is just a new entity, right? This is a unit, uh, it's a two blade. Uh, a kind of like a basi basis vector of, of rank 2 or grade 2, right? A, a unit uh, area, okay? 
y one wedge y two So this is all we can do, there is nothing else, right? And then we can define the elements now that we have. Basically we'll have one, E1, E2, and then E1, E2. So in some sense it's similar to the Grassmann algebra. And you may you may wonder what happens if we do now E1, E1, E2, for instance, right? Uh, let me just do it here. E1, E1, E2, because we have defined this, this product only for the basis vector so far. Basis vector so far. Okay, so this will be, it's associative. I haven't given you the properties of it, but it's associative. Um, so E1, uh, E1, E2, plus E1 multiplying E1, which E2. Right. You can say that this is E1 dot E1 wedge E2 plus E1 wedge E1 wedge E2. Okay. Now you have uh, hmm, the generalization of this. It's it's in the notes. Uh, basically, this is zero. And then we can look at that one, and let me just see, tell you in which, what it is, the generalization of the scalar product. Let me see. Not in the geometric product, uh, that's the wedge. Let me just copy this and, and you can look at the formula there. What this is, you have to kind of distribute this over the over the wedge product and this will be E1 dot E2 wedge E3 plus E1 wedge E2 dot E3 and this is equal to E1, well, E1, wedge, E1 dot E2 we know is zero, so this is going to be zero. We don't have to go any farther, okay. And this you can put here. This is generalization of the uh, general formula for for scalar product of multivectors. So really, we don't have anything else once we do these elements. That's which means our Clifford algebra. This Clifford algebra as a vector space will have dimension four, and an element of the algebra. in general will be just a linear combination of those so let's see let's call it P I'm going to put a hat because <coughs> that will be P0 times 1 plus P1 E1 plus P2 E2 plus P3 E1 E2 E1 E2 we can call it E1 2 And we know that that is just E1 wedge E2. Let me see if we do something interesting with this example. <coughs> okay. Another thing we w may want to see is what is E2 E1? So that will be E2 2 dot e1 plus e2 wedge e1 this is 0 and we know that this is anti-symmetric so this is equal to minus e1 wedge e2 minus e1 e2 minus e1 2 so e2 1 is minus e1 2 and I have some 
Okay, let's just draw it. So, you know, this is a fairly simple algebra. We just, you know, deal with two elements, but you may have much bigger algebras, in which case it's good to have like a multiplication table that you can refer to in order to operate with these elements. So you just put, you know, 1, E1, E2, E1, 2. One, E one, E two, E one two. Okay, and then you have to do the product. One times one is one. One times E two, uh, E one, E two, E one two, E one, E two, E one two. And then E one square equal one. E one, E two, E one two, two minus E one. And then E one two times E one. E1, E1, E2, E1, minus E1, E1, E2, minus E2, minus E2, and then E1, 2 times E2, E1, E2, E2, so that's E1, and now E1, 2, E1, 2, E1, E2, E1, E2 minus e1, e1, e2, e2, 1, 1, so this is minus 1. Okay, yeah, that looks more like it should be. Okay, so this is your multiplication table. Write a, b, a, b plus a, which b, and you know from that, which is only for vectors, you can derive a general formula, but it's it's very cumbersome, the general formula. But using associativity, then it's very easy to see it. But we, we will have that, we will do that formula, it's also good to know. But for now we have this multiplication table, and now you know, what you do for a general element, you just <coughs> distribute over the sum and apply the table. So it's very easy to program also this algebra, you have this table to refer to as the product, and. Uh, so this will be the general element, but you can also have within this algebra of the planar geometry, you can have a vector, you know, vectors are just the usual one. So a vector V will be equal to V1, E1 plus V2, E2. So within the algebra, you can have these elements. And you can operate two vectors, right? So let's just do, see what happens when we do V omega. So it will be V1 E1 plus V2 E2 times omega 1 E1 plus omega 2 E2. And that will be V, V1 omega 1, E1 squared is 1 plus V2 2, 2 squared is 1, and then we'll have V1, omega 2, V1, omega 2, minus V2, omega 1, E1, E2, I just switch the, or E1, 2. That's the result when you operate these two vectors. And of course, this is just the, the the scalar product, so that gives you, you know, the angle between the vectors if you want, right? And this over here, this is remember e1, e2 is just e1 which e2, and this gives you like the 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 area, right? Remember we saw that is the area of. Uh, V1 or V which W, right? Example R3. Okay, so again we, we will use the same R3 with dot product.
that's a typical one and then there is another one which is R3 with the kind of like the negative dot product R3 with negative dot product So let's, that, ah, let's do this one. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just changing. So the basis vector, C1, E2, E3. And now we operate with the Clifford product. E1 square equal to, now we'll put E1 transpose minus 1, minus 1, minus 1. E1, that's going to be minus 1. That is the, this is the, the bilinear form of the negative that product. Okay. E1, E2 is going to be E1 dot E2 is 0, so it's going to be E1, 2. The, if you want the wedge product, the unit area E1, 2. E1, E3, E1, 3, and this will equal to minus E3, 1. E2, E3 equal E2, 3. And then, you know, E2 squared equal to E3 squared equal to minus 1, all of them. And then we have E1, E2, E3. And that's going to be a new element, E1, 2, 3. Okay, and it's, it's basically as the wedge or the volume element. Now we can see, okay, so what is going to happen What is going to happen when we, we multiply E1, 2 times E1, 2, 3, and so on. So we can build this uh, multiplication table for all the elements. 1, E1, E2, E3. We have a lot of them now. E1, 2. Um, let me see if I use the... Uh, 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 uh. Yeah, I'm going to know if I, I... I want to use the same notation as I use here, which is um, E31, okay. E23, E31, and then E123. 1, 2, 3. one E1, one, E2, E3. And you can imagine this becomes pretty big quickly. E two three, E three one, E two three, one two three. Okay. All right. So here is our table. And now one is the unit, which means everything we multiply times it is yes itself. E1, E2, E3, E1, 2, E2, 3, E3, 1, E1, 2, 3. E1 square is minus 1. E1, E2, E1, 2. E1, E3 minus E3, 1. E1, E1, 2 is going to be E1 times E1, 2. E1, E1, E2. And that's minus E2 because E1 squared is minus 1, right? So minus E2. E1, E2, 3 is E1, 2, 3. And then E1, E3, 1, E3, uh, E3 right? E2 or minus E2? Minus E2. E1, E3, 1 equal to E1, E3, E1, which is minus E1, E1, E3, and this is minus 1, so then that's, yeah, it. we have two minus sign, one from switching because it's anti-symmetric, the other from the dot product, so where were we, E1, where are we, E1, E3, 1, oh, there, okay, and then E1, E1, 2, 3 will be <coughs> minus E2, 3, that's right, E2, 1, minus E1, 2, Minus 1, E2, 3, E2, E1, E2, 
E1, right? Let me know if I make a mistake. And then E minus E3, and then E2, 3, 1. And now we have to put 1, 3. So let me see. E2, E3, 1 equal to minus E2, E1, E3, minus E1, no, plus E1, E2, E3. So this is E1, 2, 3. And then 2, 1, 2, 3, minus E1, 3. So minus E3, 1. I think. 3, 1, E3, 1. 3, 2, minus E2, 3. Minus 1. 3, 2, 1. Now we have to change 1. 1, 2, 3, twice. So E1, 2, 3, right? E3, E2, 3. Is E2. And this is minus E1. And E3, E1, 2, 3. We have to do one switch, two switches. Is minus E1, 2, right? E1, 2, E1, E2. There has to be some uh, anti symmetry in the table so that we can use to later for E1, 2, 3. E1, 2, E3, E1, 2, 3. Oh, sorry. <laughs> All right, E1, 2, E2. Uh, no, E1, 2, E2 minus E1. Okay, good, good, thank you. E1, 2, E3, E1, 2, 3. Now it is, it's E1, 2, E1, 2. So we have to switch once, and that minus is minus 1. Minus 1, yeah. Okay, so E1, 2 square also squares to minus 1. That's good. E1, 2, E2, 3 is E1, 3 minus E3, 1. No, plus, right? Plus E3, 1. E2, 2, 3. So the 2 ca they give you a minus 1, and it's minus E3, 1. It could be E3, 1 and E minus 1, 3. Yeah, but we use 3, 1, yeah. They, we don't put 1, 3, because we are considering that our element is 3, 1. So everything we will refer to 3, 1, yeah. E1, 2, E3. 3, 1, so we switch 1, so it's a minus, another menu, minus, 2, 3, right? E, 2, 3. And then E, 1, 2, E, 1, 2, 3, we switch 1, uh, minus E, 3. Let me know if uh, E, 2, one, 3, 1, 1, 2, E, 1, 2, 3. E, 2, 3, two, 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 E, 3. E2, 3, 3, minus E2, yes. E1, two, E1, E1, 2, to E3, 1 is minus E2. E1, 2, to E3, 1. E1, 2, E3, 1. So we switch twice, no? E1, E2, E3, E1. And this is equal to yes. minus E1, E2, E1, E3, E1, E1, E2, E3, minus E2, 3. This one. Yes, okay, thank you. Minus. Good, good. <laughs> okay, E2, 3 with E1, 2. So we have to switch twice, that's a positive. And that will give us minus E1, 3, E3, 1. Right? Uh, let me do it because. E2, 3, E1, 2, E2, 3, E1, 2, equal to E2, 1, 3, 2, minus E2, 3, 2, 3, 2, 1, plus E2, 2, 3, 1, E3, 1, E2, 3, E1, 2, E3, 1, okay. E to three, E to three. Okay, so we have to switch once. Minus one. All right. E to three, three e one. Two two will be minus one. Where are we? Here. 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 Yeah. E two two three one. E two two will be minus one. Uh, yes. So it will be. So in minus E three one. Okay, thank you. Shush, I'm, I'm okay. Thanks. Okay, 2, 3, 3, 1, so that's 2, 1. So minus E1, no, minus 2, 1, so E1, 2. 
and then two three one two three uh, e two three e one two three okay minus e three two one two three e three one two two three minus e three one three e three three one minus e one right I should just copy the table three one one minus e three three one two we have to swi switch twice right so e one two three hopefully three one three e one and then three one one two three minus three two two three three one two three okay so this one we switch twice and we get one two minus e one two minus here and then e three one three one and that's minus one and e three one one two three so that's three minus three two three 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 two minus e two one two three one we switch twice minus e two three one two three two we switch one so we have a minus another minus a plus minus e three one uh, I'm not sure just check my signs because uh, e one two minus e one two one two three two three uh, so we switch <coughs> one so it's a minus and two plus minus e one And then e one two three three one, so that will be a minus e one two one. And then this which is minus e two. One two three three one minus e one two one. E one one two minus e two. Oh, okay, something is wrong here. And e one two three. Let me just do e one two three e one two three. And you guys correct these ones because <laughs> two three. E one two. Uh, let me just put the one three two three. E one one two three two three. Minus e two three two three. E two three three two. And this is minus one. Minus one one. I don't know. For some reason, I get a one here. All right. So something is wrong here. We should have an e three. This okay, this looks okay. This should be either this or that are wrong, and this or this because this did you see three? No, the next one, I think. Did you see three? This one should be E, E3. Yeah, this, this one is E3. No. <laughs> Let's just do it E123. With e to three, e to three, and this is equal to minus e one two three three two, and this is minus e one. Uh, one two three. This one, right? This is minus e one, e to three, minus e one. Yeah, this is e three then, and this is e two. Okay. Whew. All right. Oh my, has taken us a, a while to do this table. Okay, so we there are some parts that are skew symmetric across the table and some parts that are symmetric so this line and this line and that line and that line are symmetric uh, is this a one or a minus one yes test that one and then the rest you see across the diagonal is skew symmetric so e two three minus e two three e three one minus e two uh, minus e two uh, okay let me check my table I don't have it so I cannot check it all right let me see. Let's e one two three. This is clear, and then e three one two. E three one two minus e one three two, which is e one two three. Yeah, that's fine. So this is symmetric across here because it's this big element. So the whole table will be symmetric diagonal. It's not symmetric. Some elements are skew symmetric or anti symmetric. So some of them are symmetric, some of them are anti-symmetric. It's not uh, 
So it should be everything should be skew symmetric except uh, except these ones over here. But now I'm looking at this one and I'm just getting uh, this one also symmetric. I think the the one to three elements are symmetric, and then the the two elements and the one element are skew symmetric. All right, so this is our table, our basis elements for this one, and we'll just finish with this one. So we'll have one e one e two e three e one two e two three e three one e one two three. And you can just create a general element. So this is a one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight dimensional algebra. And here we can define already things. Let me see what things I define here. <coughs> now if we take, let's just take five minutes to do that. If we take the even elements, we can create even subalgebras. So the even elements, elements form an even subalgebra. So that means if we take the ones that have rank even, so basically one. E12, E23, E31. This is the Clifford, uh, the even Clifford subalgebra. You have a plus there of the uh, 0, 3, 0. Okay, this is the algebra. Even Clifford subalgebra. And a general element of this algebra will look so like this. Actually, you can think of this as a, as a Hamilton, Hamilton's quaternion. Okay, so if you call i to the 2, 3, and j the 3, 1, and k the 1, 2, here you have a quaternion. <coughs> and again, we can do this kind of, you know, the e1, e2, e3, so the 2, 3, which is this, you know, will be the i element. And then the 3, 1, which is this one, will be the j, and the 1, 2 will be the k. That's why we organize them in this way. So you can think of a quaternion, instead of just, you know, coming from nowhere, it's an element of this algebra, of the R3. And we know that, you know, this a quaternion in general has four elements. This is a, if it's a unit quaternion, if this element is unit, then it represents a rotation. Unit represents a rotation. And how do we, so we have here the rotation as an element of the Clifford algebra and then you can have the vector as an element of the Clifford algebra and you can operate them together.